What do you, what are your thoughts on the saying that, you know how people say, follow your passion and the money will come. Do you think, do you believe that to be true or are there, is there, or is that an unfinished like sentence and there's more things to consider? Because I think in reality, sometimes people don't have the ability to fully, you know, dive into their passion. If you have, you know, certain responsibilities to family, financially, whatever it might be. So what are your thoughts about that? You know, if you're following your passion, maybe money won't matter. I don't know what my thoughts are about that because if you follow your calling, I'm going to, I'm going to disconnect from that word passion. Okay. I'm going to follow a deep calling, my purpose. Like I'm here to do this. When you live that way, the money doesn't matter. And the money does come in the end, but money doesn't just come from the calling. The calling has to come, that has to be used in the service of other people, right? If, you're, if your why is I want to make money, then you will never have enough money. Mm. But if your why is I am here to serve and I will serve in, maybe I'm an artist, and I will serve humanity by creating these pieces, or maybe they have street art or, 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 and maybe they sell their t-shirts and they donate it to a certain charity, but I'm going to use my calling, which is art to serve humanity. Then money, usually the universe will respond in that. So I do believe in like karmic exchange here, where if I'm depositing into the universe, the universe responds back with something. But there's a general contentment mm. that money cannot buy. So I think money is important. I'm not saying money is not. But if money is your goal, I'm sorry, you're never going to be happy. If your only goal is, oh, oh, I'm going to follow my passion so money can come. No, I'm sorry. Then you're in it for the wrong thing. But no. if you say, I just want to come alive every single day. And I want to feel my work and I want to feel my heart every single day. I don't think you think about money <laughs> at that point. You, you think about meeting your basic needs and making sure that your kids go to a good school and this and that. So I think if you're so obsessed with money, then you'll never have enough. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. And I think something you said that was super interesting is reframing it from passion to calling. So instead of, you know, how everyone yeah. talks about finding your passion or whatever it might be. Uh, but if you think about it from a calling, I think, I think it just resonates with people differently. Like you take it in differently than just like a passion. But then the question becomes, um, you know, that a lot of people ask like, oh, how do I, how do I find what I'm passionate about? How do I figure out what my true calling is? It's like in your example, I remember, uh, when I was doing the research that you took a psychology class and you didn't like it. <laughs> and then you're like, I I'd, hated it. And you'd, you're like, I'd never be in it. And then here you are, I don't know, 10, 15 years later as like clinical psychologist with like all this kind of thing. So it's so funny how things work out. So how wow. did you find out your true calling? How did you come to realize this is exactly what you wanted to do? You know, I've always listened to not knowing it. Now I know. Now I know what I was listening to. And I trust that voice way more now. But I, if I didn't like something, I didn't do it. Like when I was younger, you know, this was really where my spirit was super loud. And so, okay, I'll do psychology. Took an, you know, abnormal psychology, like 101 in college. And it was like, oh my God, this is like, forget it. I don't want this. And then I went and, and it was, I mean, everything happened for a beautiful reason. And then I got my um my bachelor's in anthropology and journalism because writing and cultures and people like that brought me to like anthropology my dad is like what <laughs> <laughs> is that like when you dig things up and i'm like no that's archaeology <laughs> this <Yeah>. is anthropology <laughs> like oh my god what is she studying and he spent thousands of dollars trying to educate me in something that is absolutely irrelevant but i did it I did it and I loved it and I came to life and I had no idea what I was going to do with it, but I was like, it'll, it'll, it'll work out. Eventually I ended up getting a marketing job and I did it for a year and a half. And the day, literally the day I said, I can't, I can't 
no. I, it was like an aha moment. I'm sitting in my office and they have invested money in me at this point because they see me as this like superstar salesperson, marketing and this and that. And great. It was good. And then one day I just said, oh my God, I, I can't be in a job where I have to use psychology to sell things to people that they don't need. Like I can't do it. And so and, and that's what it meant for me. So I'm not saying that that's what marketing means to everybody, but that's what it meant for me for in that yeah. moment as when I was 20 something years old. That moment, I walked into my boss's office and I said, I'm sorry, I have to resign. And I called my dad after and I was like, oh, I'm going to go to dental school. And he's like, what? <laughs> like, you just got out of school for anthropology. And I'm like, yeah, but like, you know, I really like dentists and I like smiles. And I, I just think I need to be a dentist. And I think it'll be good for me as a woman to be a dentist because then I can manage my own practice and my own schedule. I think I'm going to be a dentist. I drive down. I start taking the initiatory classes for dental school and I'm sitting in the dental school classes and we're doing chemistry and chemistry. I don't even know what it was called. Organic chemistry. Like you need to be organic for chemistry too. I don't know what that meant, but there were all these like letters and numbers on the board. And I was like, uh, uh, like there's no words. Like everything has a letter and a, I'm, uh, 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 uh. So I was like, I'm not going to do dental school. I can't like, I can't. And plus, I like talking to people and I like it when they talk back and I hate it when dentists ask you a question and then they have your mouth with like this thing and they're like asking you a question. It's like, no, I don't want this. So I go to my sister. I was like, I don't know what to do with my life. And she's like, tell me what you like. I said, I like people. I like helping people. I want to go to bed at night knowing that I did something that was, you, you know, helpful. And she's like, well, why don't you study psychology? By the way, this is six years after I took that psychology course that she said this to me. I was like, yeah, why don't I do that? I went in, started my doctoral program. I applied, I got in and I started it. And I tell people that the day this voice tells me, don't do this anymore. You don't like this. I'm out of here. I'll go do something else. I have to listen to that voice because I can't live every single day of my life in a prison yeah. that I have created for myself. And I see it as the biggest form of self betrayal that you have a voice that's telling you something that this isn't right for you. This isn't right for you, but you're locked into it somehow. Um, and I'm not saying you need to quit your day job, right? There are people who have to pay the bills and they have to feed the family and they have to send that money back home, but find your calling, find a way, to live that out somehow. So there are people who are like consultants, but they like have like, you know, they design their own suits. I know people who've done that and like they draw, you know, and they go to art school over summer and they take like two weeks off and okay, live it out mm -hmm. every single day and find a way for that calling to serve humanity. And you've done your thing. Yeah. No, and I love what you said about uh, trusting your, it's about trusting your intuition. Like you said, that inner voice told you that they don't do this and you know, you made that decision to move on. And I think that's something that everyone needs to start doing more of to, listening to the inner voice. And like you said, that's how you'll start to maybe identify what your true calling is and find a way to bring it forward. Yeah. To humanity as well. No, I totally agree. I think that's a really important point though. And this is something that I'd like to talk a, a little bit about yeah, is please. that there's so many people that say, trust your gut, trust your gut, you know, trust your intuition, trust that voice. And people are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like what voice or what, in, like what intuition you can't, like, it's actually not safe for you to trust yourself if you don't know yourself, because then you're trusting a stranger and uh -huh. your psyche is protecting you from trusting this thing, which is a stranger. So of course I'm gonna trust my mom because she's not a stranger. But how can I trust this voice inside of me when it's a stranger? So I'll trust my mom and she tells me, go be a doctor, I'll go be a doctor. I'll trust my dad, he tells me, go be a lawyer, I'll go be a lawyer because I trust them. I don't trust myself. And so do not trust yourself unless you know yourself. If you've done some work where you're connected to your voice and I can feel the feeling 
where I know, oh, I'm coming to life like this is good. And then there are times where I'm like, uh uh-uh, like this isn't for me. You need to sense these things. We are sensory beings. And if you are disconnected to your physical body, which most modern man is, we are living up in our head and the whole life happens up in here and we're absolutely disconnected to our instinct. If you are not connected to your instinct, which is in your body, and it can't be like a visceral experience for you, don't trust yourself. Yeah. Actually, trust someone else <laughs> that, <laughs> that you might actually know more, that might know more about life. Yeah. So you really got to know yourself. You got to spend time with yourself. You got to quiet in that noise. You got to sit with yourself. You got to hear, oh God, this is when you're being really negative. This is when you, you have to be honest with yourself if you're going to trust yourself. Like how can you be honest with someone who's dishonest with you? You can't like stroke your own ego. Like you got to be real. You got to be right. You got to be authentic. How can you trust people that are not real, authentic, and you feel like they're selling you something? You won't. And how would you do that for yourself? Exactly. I've, I've actually never heard anyone speak about it in that way. Everyone, like you said, very correctly talks about trust your intuition, trust your intuition, but no one's added that second part, which is you have to know yourself to trust your intuition because then like you correctly said, you are trusting a stranger. And I've never mm-hmm. ever thought of that second part that completes what that sentence should be. It should be the two of those things together. A hundred. Absolutely. hundred percent. Oh, that's so interesting. I totally, 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 totally agree. Um,